This time we're going to take that power supply that I ripped out of that broken TV and uh, get it working because without um, adding a little mod to it, basically a resistor, it's not going to put out anything except for 5 volts. So let's get the power supply turned on and see if it works. So today I'm going to just work on that little power supply that I stole out of the TV. That uh, one that the uh, timing controller board was messed up on. So I want to make this power supply operate as an independent power supply out of the set itself. And of course we have to figure out how to turn it on. Because if I apply power to this, I won't get any voltage other than my standby voltage. I'm using a different camera today. This is the older AX33 that I'm using today. Normally I use a 53, but I put the AX33 in just to, just to show off the difference. So the differences between the cameras is that this one only has a 10 times zoom lens. Whereas the other one has a 20 times, so I can get in much closer with the other camera than I can with this one. Um, that's really the big difference. This one's got a higher pixel count, though. This one uses a 20.5 megapixel sensor, even though we're only using a fraction of that for HD. They're both 4K cameras. But I'm just curious if you guys notice anything in the picture or sound that's different between the two of them. So I'm in the same shooting position as normal. Um, so we're going to hook this power supply up. On the bottom here I've got line, ground, and neutral. So if I put neutral on there and I put line on to this one and apply line voltage to the power supply, I don't expect that there's going to be any outputs other than the standby output which will be on the standby plug over here and it should just be a matter of a pull up resistor to the standby to the oops might help if I have this in the right mode to the sense pin I believe this is the sense pin here it's got zero on it that one's got zero and that one should have five volts which it does so to make this thing work basically all I need to do is pull up the switched input which is going to be one of these two pins here uh, probably this one here. I haven't looked on the bottom of the board yet, but it might even be listed as a switched input. Now, this thing has been running, the oscillator's been running, but there'll still be a fair bit of voltage here across this capacitor until it discharges completely, so we're not going to touch it. It'll discharge on its own though, and it doesn't take long for these things to drain down. This is the pins here. It's down to three volts, so it's now safe. And the reason why it discharges is because one of the oscillators is already running to keep the standby going. So here we go. Here's our standby over here. If we look on the board with the 10 times zoom, which won't go in as won't go in as close as the other one, it also won't focus as close. But if we look on here, we'll see five volts and we'll see on off. So if I just put a small resistor, well, first of all, we can verify that none of the other voltages are running. We've got a, a, a 12 volt supply and we've got a 24 volt supply and actually two headers with 24 volts but we've got a 12 volt supply here as you can see the first four are ground and the other four are all five volts and same over here we've got five that are ground and five that are 24. so this thing should not be on as it sits if i apply power to it again i should only see the supply for standby the others there should not be any voltage so our standby is there oh it might help if I get the plug in properly all right where's my standby things aren't working that is on there uh, that has got a connection there. Maybe it just wasn't connecting properly. We should have a standby voltage over here. Which we do. Negative 5 because I had the probes reversed. There'll be nothing on these pins. Because it's shut off. To turn it on, I'm just going to put... I'm going to use a 1K just because that's what I've got kicking around here, but I'm just going to put a 1K resistor between the switch line and the 5 volt, always. So right here we're going to put a, a resistor just across here from the switch on off to the 5 volt tab, 
and that will bias the power supply on so as soon as it's plugged in I should have both 12 and 24 and of course 5 volt supplies and that's why I'm doing it on the bottom so the headers are still available for other applications oh, love this wonderful this wonderful impossible to solder onto uh, lead free solder crap but we'll just put one there and I wrap that around over to the 5 volt supply side over here Now this pull-up resistor could be anything. I just happen to have a 1K just kicking around here. That's what I used. Could have used the 2K. Probably could have used the 10K. Probably could have used the 20K. All right, let's reconnect the power. And I should have 12 and 24 volt supplies running in addition to the 5 volt supply. Okay, we have zero. This is not making a connection. That's just stupid. It's this alligator clip. It's not not working out. That's why it's just not making a good connection. All right. We have five volts. We have 12 volts. 11.9, close enough. And we have 24 volts. This power supply will give me 24 volts at four amps. 12 volts at three and a half and five volts at one amp. So put this in a little box, plastic box, and a couple of headers for ground, plus 12, plus 24, and plus five. Nice little basic power supply, regulated power supply. Be great for driving those little amplifier boards that need 24 volts. That's what I was thinking of when I saw this. A 24 volt at 4 amp that'll drive any of those little amplifier boards that need between 12 and 24 volts for maximum power 24 volts gives a maximum power we have 24 volt 4 amp supply here should do just fine for that anyway that was just a little quick video here and uh, let me know what you think does this camera look any better does it sound any better than the other one this is older this camera but the one I normally use replaced this one, but I figured I'd put this one on just for the hell of it, just to try it out. Um, haven't used it for a while. I use this for my, a lot of my scenery stuff, right? I take this one traveling. So that's what this, and I use it as a second camera. So I have been using it. It just, it hasn't been my main camera for shooting videos since I got the 53. And I bought, the only reason I bought the 53 was because Sony came out with a 43 to replace the 53 and they took away the uh, eyepiece. I'll show you the other camera I normally shoot with. This is the one I normally use. So the Sony AX53 because it's got a bigger lens. It's got a 20 times lens. So I can get in much closer than this one. This one here, that's the extreme that this one can go. And you've seen some shots from the other one which goes much closer than that. Here's the AX33 as close as this one can go as you can see and um, I'm going to switch to the other one now just so you guys get a difference between the two of them as I bang around the camera here and I will do it at exactly the same height so we can see the difference in them because it is a substantial difference so this is the wide angle for the AX33 and then zoom all the way in And that's the close-up shot for the AX33. And I'm, I'm intentionally moving around on the camera here just so you can hear how the microphone performs on this one because I think they have different sound qualities between the two cameras. I'll switch to the other one now just for a direct comparison. And now I'm back onto the AX53, which is the one I normally shoot with. This is the AX33, my backup camera. A little bit smaller, say less, less powerful lens on it. If I zoom this one in, we'll see how much closer this one will go. That's how close this one will zoom in. Although this one I can bring the camera in closer and still take advantage of the zoom. You can see it looks like a cracked connection right there, doesn't it? Probably should go over some of those connections on this 
little power saw pie before I use it for anything. Anyway, um, yeah, let me know what you think. Which camera you think looks better. Again, this is the, we're back on the AX53 now. Which is the one I normally have been using for the last, I guess, about three years since I got it. Uh, the reason I bought it was I bought it as a spare for if the other one breaks down. As I wanted one that had an optical, or not optical, but an electronic viewfinder right at the back here. For me, when I'm shooting anything outside, I put my eye up to the camera. I don't use the uh, I don't use flip-out screen. Flip-out screens are too hard to see. Right? Flip-out screens are too hard to see in the in the sun. So I use the eyepiece on the back, the color eyepiece, and the 53 has it, as does the 33. This one's 20 megapixels. This other one that I'm shooting on now, I think it's only 15. 15 megapixels is what this one is, I believe. 16. 16.6. 16 when you're shooting in 4K, it still only uses like 8 or 9. I think it's 8 shooting in 4K, but these can take still photos as well. So this one will shoot a still photo at 20 megapixels, whereas the one that I'm on here will only shoot a still photo at 16. So the still photos off this looks better. That's why I've been, I use this one when I'm traveling just to take pictures. This is my video and point and shoot camera. I do everything on this just because I don't have to carry one camera with me when I'm traveling. So I've been using this one for that. And most of the stuff I'm shooting is landscape. So I'm on a wide angle anyway. So the zoom doesn't really make a heck of a lot of difference. Anyway, that's how you start up one of these power supplies from a TV. You just have to put a, 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 a pull up resistor across the switched input to the 5 volt always and that'll turn the power supply on thanks for watching